Joe's ready! Yes! Go! We do! This is a meadow. <laughs> That's the end of my presentation. No. Uh, hey guys. Uh, my name is Joel Metter. I work for a company uh, called Expected Behavior. We have some products you've maybe heard of. Uh, DocRaptor, which is a, an HTML to PDF converter. Uh, Instrumental, which is a, an application performance monitoring tool. Woo! And Gages, which is a very simple to use, easy to use web analytics tool. Uh, that's enough of pimping myself and also my company. Uh, so let's get let's begin. Uh, also, who in here has Redis, Ruby 2.3.0 on their machine and Bundler? Anyone? <laughs> who, has, who has a computer with them and also those things I said? Okay, so we got like two. All right, I'm gonna change my talk a little bit. Um, all of the code I'm gonna talk about is up here at the end. Uh, while I'm talking, everyone think of a, a feature that you might wanna implement using Action Cable, uh, and then we'll try and do it in like 10 minutes and see if we can. Okay. And it'll be live coding and it will be the worst, <laughs> as we all know. Which is why I did this, this application two days ago so that I didn't have to live code it. Uh, okay, so Action Cable is what I'm gonna talk about. Action Cable is a, a gem and feature that has been added to Rails uh, in Rails 5. Rails 5 is currently in beta one. That means we're probably gonna get like one more beta maybe and like two or three release candidates, uh, which might take a, a week and it might take another year. Uh, Rails is, is tricksy. Uh, I would encourage you to go and check it out after Rails 5 is released, unless you really need WebSockets in your application, uh, which is what Action Cable is. It's an easy to use uh, WebSocket thing. If you don't know what WebSockets are, um, you can think of them as a a bi-directional communication mechanism uh, between a, a web browser and your server. Uh, it doesn't use HTTP, it's just a connection that's open, so you can send messages back and forth. Uh, it stays, the, the, the connection stays open. Um, and if that makes sense to you, then we can proceed. Uh, <laughs> to say that a different way, HTTP is a stateless Thing. There's no state, and when you make a request with HTTP, that request ends, and then the connection is closed. Caveats, but that's that's kind of HTTP. It's a here's a message. Uh, did you get it? Cool. We're done. And uh, WebSockets are hey, let's talk to each other until one of us dies. <laughs> uh, so that's that's, that's WebSockets. Um, so. The, the documentation out there is like a normal Rails transition, real all over the place because the feature has changed a lot since the first commit. Um, so it took me like three applications before I got one that actually could communicate between server and client, but I have one now. Um, uh, heartbreak. <laughs> um, so I was going to have everyone team up in the pairs of two or three and like build your own thing on top of my, my demo app, but we only have like three computers that can do it and Redis and Ruby 2.3 are like a gig each, so we'll just do that. Um, yeah, so what I did uh, was take the standard application uh, with Action Cable, which is a chat application, and I added a couple features to that just to see how easy. Uh, I was really surprised by how slick it is now with Rails 5. Uh, before when I used WebSockets, it's been a real pain in the ass, and it was actually like, oh, it's done. Is that all I have to do? So like, like normal Rails stuff, it's pretty polished. Um, and I'll give you a demo. There's the meadow again. Everyone see that? How about now? That's as big as it'll go, so I hope so. Uh, so this is all kind of, I'm gonna give you a demo of what I wrote and then show you how that works. Um, so 
let's pretend I was hot chatting someone. Is that a technical term? Yep, hot chat. That's a, that's a technical term. All right, so something is wrong. <laughs> uh, so this, I, this is great. My demo is already broken. Uh, and my bongos still work though. That's pretty good. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, in theory those should work, but I messed something up and didn't notice. Um, so I did that, and then I have this, which is another feature I built, uh, which is if 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 you've made uh, if you've made like an application and monitored it before, this is the kind of shit you get. This is basically the worst version of instrumental that I could make in an hour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's so many windows. So you can see I was just in like a lot of things really fast. That's so all events, not just chats. Yep. So we get events and then types. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's what I built. Uh, think of a feature that you want to build that requires like real time communication between a server and a browser. And at the end, we'll like raise our hands and try and build that, and it'll go horribly. And it'll be great. Um, so the way this works is uh, in your application, you basically set up an uh, action cable like this. This is all you got to do to set up the client side. Um, and, and what you do is you, uh, you make channels, um, which are defined both in your client and your server. Uh, this is the message channel. Uh, I have screwed something up probably with my sessions, so it's not actually reporting the right person. But I swear this worked at one point. I had Foo and Bar, and they were both sending messages. It was great. Um, so essentially, you create a subscription to a channel. Uh, on the server side, there is a new top-level uh, Rails directory called Channels, um, and you get some some default stuff. I didn't put anything in here because I didn't have anything to put in here because I didn't implement uh, like helpers or authentication, or like a bunch of other important stuff you would want in a real app, but this, this is where it would go. Um, but our messages channel on, on the server side looks like this. Uh, and what happens is uh, when you're subscribed, when you subscribe on the client side, we get a message to the server, and we just say, if we get something that's broadcast to the messages channel, Send it out, um, and it's pretty easy. Uh, and I'll show you what the controller looks like that does that. Um, so, so this is actually all you have to do. You have to do set up the action cable thing in that index copy. Uh, there's actually one that's built into Rails that I didn't know about until like tonight. Uh, there's already a cable.coffee file. You just like uncomment two lines of code, and you're ready to go. But that didn't exist in the tutorial that I was following. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, but that thing's easy. Uh, so basically, you set up a controller. Uh, you set up that copy with the messages. You set up that message channel. That's it. Like, that's all you got to do. Um, so pretty simple. You can see here I'm sending stats out. Um, so again, not too hard. The other side of this. Uh, is 
So that, that's basically when you send a message, it, it makes a normal Rails request. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Uh, these are, this is kind of the new, new stuff. So this is, this is what, you look, what you're going to look at on the server side. This is your, your log. Um, pretty simple to read. It's nice. Um, anybody have any questions so far? <clears throat> is Action Cable an actual WebSocket implementation itself? When I was reading about it, I thought it was more like Active Job where it was kind of like an interface to a common interface between different WebSocket implementations, whether you say or something else. But is it, I guess if it's an actual WebSocket implementation. I, I'm pretty sure it's an actual implementation. Okay. Um, you know, like like act, active job, it will probably be pulled out right now. It depends on Redis Pub Sub. That's how the actual like event happened, um, which is why I said you need to have Redis installed. Uh, probably in the future that will become a generic thing, maybe even for Rails 5 release, but it's not clear yet. Um, all this stuff is, is still in flux, like this is 5.0 beta. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble just keeping, like starting the server. Set faults about half the time I started. Uh, so use in production at your own risk. Um, but I'll get to some of the some of the caveats. Um, One more question. Can yeah. you just walk us through the flow from, like, say, clicking on the bongo? Sure. What's what's going where? Uh, so, so what I've done with uh, with jQuery here is uh, added a click handler, um, and I have a I have set up in my message channel. Uh, an action on the channel. So when you click that bongo, it, it grabs this, which is out of order. Um, and what this basically is, is an RPC call. Uh, you can think of it like that, which is a remote procedure call, I think is what that stands for, if, you've, if you're a newly programmer. But um, that's an RPC. Uh, basically what this does is this makes a call into this action, um, and since in my client I have I have said I'm going to listen to two messages, um, then this gets sent out. So when I click this this anchor, um, a new message gets sent out on the message channel, and then added, uh, just like here, um, a new event comes in received here, and then we just put that into the list. So there's a bunch of stuff happening in the background there with Redis and a TCP connection. There's some data serialization and deserialization. Uh, but for simple cases, you don't need to know any of that. You're just like, message sent, message received, done. There's a bunch of callbacks uh, that are well documented in the Action Cable gym, which is part of Rails now, um, for both sides, the server and client side. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on those, but received is good to know. Uh, and there's there's a bunch for channel open, channel, channel close. Uh, I don't do any error handling here, which is, which is really good. Uh, but in a, in a production app, you would want to do like reconnect logic and a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, there's not more to show. It's, it's those 10 lines of code and then like real time messaging. Your, the messages channel Ruby file, is there like a new folder like app channels that you just throw those in and just yep. picks those up from there? Yeah, and it's namespaced like like normal Rails, other normal Rails stuff, so you can have like 
admin, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's pretty easy. Uh, I'll just show the stats. Uh, and this again is the the stat side is a big old block of how to render some stuff, which is ugly. And I'm using like a rolling window array hash to deal with this. It's all hard coded. I'm not going to show you. It's not important for the demo, but. The, the WebSocket part is I received a message, put some data into this thing, then render it. Uh, so, real simple. Um, on the server side, that looks kind of like that. Nice. And again, I have. Uh, <laughs> I have a session controller which broadcasts events. Uh, if I had taken this like one hour longer, I was probably going to like make generic all of the stats things into it was basically going to become instrumental uh, with no storage. So I stopped here because I thought it would be harder to understand if I kept going. Uh, and that's it. That's like that's the demo. That's three features that are live, that are easy to do. Uh, there's not more code, I'm not hiding anything. Like, well, I was I was surprised by how slick it was. Real quick, uh, on your stats thing, the, the graph appeared to be moving at like about once per second. Uh, how's that happening? Is that about the script that's like client side? Yeah, it is all client side. Uh, I'll pop it open, we can just look at it. I am using Chart or sorry, Canvas JS. Um, I have this this structure that's defined on the window, um, and basically, it it contains a series of arrays. And anytime we receive a message, we put some data onto the end of that array, and on every clock tick, which is using set interval, every clock tick, we just pop the front off and graph the, the end. Like it's it's real dumb, but <laughs> it has some race conditions. I didn't care to do them. Uh, it doesn't guarantee that everyone that's looking at the graph will see the same data. Like there's a bunch of stuff there that's wrong. Uh, but it looks cool, right? So uh, I think I have a log out of it. I don't know. It's it's neat. Um, there, Bond goes. And, you know, you can like turn data on and off. Um, what what should we implement? I have an idea. If no one comes up with a good one, uh, if you want to do IRC style channels, mm -hmm. would it be adding the new key value pair to the message data and then filtering on the presentation? Um, so let me pop open something to show you how I did stats because they're all different events. Um, so inside of So inside here, I did kind. Um, so essentially, you can think of the data that's sent down as a, as a JSON blob or as a Ruby hash, however your mind looks at data bags. Um, it's a data bag that gets serialized and deserialized automatically. Um, so when I, when I consume that here, uh, that's just looking at that that key. So, so the way the stats thing works is if I get any event on the stats channel, I say an event happened, and I log that, and then I look at the kind, and then I log that too. Um, 
I only define four things as demo. But yeah, if, if you're doing IRC, you might do it that way. Um, you might set up individual channels for everything. It just depends on what you had server-wise. Um, because each of these connections will hold permanently a connection between the client and the server. So you can have really bad cases where you know we have a server restart and like stampede, like there's all kinds of of behavior here where uh, it's bad. Uh, so you probably I didn't handle any of that because I couldn't get this to work, which is the thing I want to talk about. Uh, I couldn't get this to work with the thing I, I use a lot called Finch, uh, which is a a local to public internet proxy thing. Um, because of how I set this up, um, I should show you one more thing. In the routes file, I did this. Uh, I mounted the action cable stuff inside of my app. Uh, the other way to set it up is to write your own rackup file and then run it separately. I think I would have succeeded with private to public internet there if I had done it that way, but I didn't know what I was doing. So here we are. Because what I wanted to do is give all of you uh, a, an address, and then you could all hopefully the Bongo talk to each other. And screw flow doc. But I couldn't I couldn't get that working and I had already spent my requisite four hours making a demo, so I was just like, whatever, it's fine. Um, Has anybody made any claims on scalability or to uh, so I haven't seen anything real hard. Uh, I've seen a lot of soft numbers. Yeah. Uh, we're talking like ten to a hundred thousand connections through a vent machine on a single machine. How many? Ten to what? Ten to a hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, Basecamp three is using Action Cable already, um, and they have a lot of users. I think that if you're going to use it, I would probably go with having a separate server when you tie it into into your Rails app. If you're not just like I just started this app, like I think you're probably going to have a bad time, uh, just because it's going to be sharing connection space with your Rails app. Uh, even if you're using like Puma, which you have to use Puma right now, I think, or the other one that's uh, invented. But yeah, it a lot, but. If you have a lot of scale, maybe not enough for you to run them at the same time in the right. same place. Because right. uh, they'll, I mean, they'll share Ruby object space. And, right. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting to see that. It's in production at Basecamp. Uh, it has gotten way, way better since the first commit. Like, way better. It's super good now, as you saw. Well, <laughs> It's, it's really easy. Uh, I wouldn't say flawless, because there's not a lot of guidance out there. Um, but it's pretty good. Um, web sockets are never flawless anyway. That's true. I, I probably should have implemented the error handling, but here we are. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got. What should we, what should we implement? Does anyone want me to actually sit here and try and implement something? Kick out another user? Okay. Kick out another user. I was actually thinking of uh, something very similar myself, so. <laughs> Just remake IRC for the bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've already done that, basically. <laughs> I'm sure why I see that. Good job. I know I'm trying to get some business. I'm in. That looks good. I'm in.
Close enough. What we want to do basically is invoke uh, something on the server, I think, uh, just like Mongo, or just a server side thing. Uh, I don't remember how I did that now, because I did it two days ago, so I'm going to go cheat. Uh, let's call it. Eh, whatever, it's fine. Oh, bear. Sure, everyone is waiting. Yep. Huh? Probably. Probably want that a bit. Uh, okay, so I think now that if I uh, go to my thing, I don't know, something happened. Hmm. <coughs> so that's probably the wrong thing since I don't have a message to find. Just a plural, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> maybe. So smart. You get a prize. Uh, okay, so message is channel. That's a bad one to use, though, right? Because I'm overloading something. Uh, what if we made just like a new channel? Call it uh, admin channel. this actually do, do you think? Just delete a bunch of sessions, like click a logout button? I'm thinking like click a logout button for the user. Like trigger a, a logout click. Like you lose their mouse to Yeah, I want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. That would be wicked cool, but I don't know how to do that one. Um, yeah, I always have to see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Doing good work tonight. This is live coding. This is what it's always like. Like, ooh, naming things under. Uh, let's see. So, hardest part of program. Let's try that. I don't know if that'll work. Seems seems good. Does this one need to be subscribed like the other one? Yep. So I think that probably we just grab that uh, grab that logout button, just click it for me. If I do anything wrong, does anyone know? 
Could it also like add a message that says like bye Felicia or something? It does what? It just like replaces their screen with like bye Felicia. Five? What? Bye Felicia? Bye Felicia. Yeah. I don't understand that. I think it is. Okay. I don't understand that, but it is. I can buy it. Oh, oh my God! Jesus. <laughs> you heard my heart call. <clears throat> All right, I made something. I made a bad mistake somewhere. You had an, like an at at equals empty hash. Do you remember that? It was like you were defining. I don't have a copy script, so there's. But I'm guessing it's like an include order. Like maybe, yeah, that thing right there. What's that guy doing? Uh, that should be fine. That's setting a. Uh, like, what's that called? A, it's, it's setting up a namespace or something, right? Yeah, I think it takes place in this. Yeah. There you go. Essentially, you're defining a global variable for me. I don't know. I've made some horrible mistake here. I don't know what it is. Uh, so I can't get the, uh, the thing to work. The, the channel will not show up, basically. Uh, I'm not sure why. Yep, you're correct. That's the thing about Action Cable. You have to restart the server when you find your channels. Uh, nice. Live coding. <laughs> yep. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Nope. Still not working. <laughs> Great. Well, that's one problem we've solved. Uh, uh, hmm. All right. Well, I give up. Anyway, it would be like that, except I wouldn't be under pressure. <laughs> um, that's generally the way you would do it though, you define the channel on the server side, uh, subscribe. Subscriptions probably is the thing I didn't do, uh, actually. One last ditch effort to make this demo work. Now we're going to call it. Hey, it might have worked. Nope, it didn't work. No. <laughs> that was a fun ride. <laughs> you do have to subscribe to your channels. I also was going to go on. I forgot to do the subscription. Uh, I've probably forgotten something. This would happen in like a minute. As soon as I step away from this, I'll be like, oh yeah, that thing. I'll push it up to the GitHub repo so you can see what I had to do to fix it. Uh, I suspect I'm one or two lines away from actually having this working. But yeah, uh, actually it was pretty neat. You should check it out. Um, you can play some bongos. You can add bongos to your application if you want. That's pretty cool. Does Action Cable support sound effects? Uh, I mean, in the sense that HTML, JavaScript, yeah. yes. I probably should have done that. That would be a sweet 2.0 feature. That's too, that's too, uh, that's too, next, next scrum, we'll talk about that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you ever use a gem called Bongo Cable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I probably should. Uh, so that's my presentation. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Realistically, do you see yourself using Action Cable in production? Uh, I have a feature that I really want to add to one of our apps, and I need this kind of thing to do it. Um, like three weeks ago, I probably would have been like, I guess I'll use Pusher. Uh, now I'm more like, 
you know, what if I didn't use Flisher? I can just, I can just bake that right in. Uh, so once it's once it's production, once that version of Rails is production, I will probably probably put it in. Um, I'm not going to use it. I've had a lot of problems with the beta. Uh, just trying to get a demo app up, like I, I'm not going to make my infrastructure company run on beta rails. I just it's irresponsible. <laughs> but if I was starting a new thing, maybe uh, I know a couple things I want to do with it. So yeah, I'm I am probably going to use it sometime in production in the next year. Oh. I think the strange was like it's too much, but I ran across um, like Action Controller Live the other day um, for like streaming. Output. Uh, it was being used to like stream console output, uh, basically to a, a page um, through the app. Um, does anybody know like where that fits like in this paradigm with the, the new action cable stuff? I I I, I heard of action control live before, and then I started hearing about this stuff, and I wondered where if they were related at all, if they used any similar it's stuff. Not a new thing. Yeah, apparently it's in Rails four and stuff. I I had never heard of it. Until the other day, and I still started using it, and I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I didn't know if anybody else had just heard, like, I don't know, about that, and if it had anything to do with the action cable stuff. Are you talking about Rails 4 stream? Yeah, it's, it's where you can stream up, it, and it's like you have to include the action controller live to be able to stream up. But so take this with a grain of salt because I've not implemented it, but I think that's one. Okay, maybe that's the difference then. Is it just one way? Uh, okay, that would make sense. Because yeah, I think you're right. I don't think it's too. Basically, Rails fire hose. You can consume as much as the server can spit out. Yeah, that would make sense. Anybody else? Um, what do you have to do, if anything, to your uh, web server? Uh, you mean the application server or the front? Uh, you shouldn't have to change anything for a moderate, like a small to moderate size uh, server. You might want to bump up your Keep Alive settings for that, like that set of uh, of backends. But it, hypothetically, the TCP channel will stay open. And if you implement all of the like reopen stuff, uh, like it, it should take care of itself if you've done it properly. Um, which you know, don't fuck it up is a bad, bad mantra. But in this case, it should. Uh, what I've from what I've read, it's not actually a big change, uh, unless you are opening a very large number of channels per user, or your users are very very sticky and have a lot of tabs open. Um, which, in which case, you can basically run out of app server connections or uh, index connections or whatever you use Apache. Um, so you may have to bump up your file limit. Normal stuff that you do when when you scale out. And right now, you will need Redis server somewhere. You need Redis and one of the server, one of the Ruby servers that runs uh, that has threads, basically. What role does Redis play here? Uh, so the mechanism that that essentially gets events and then sends them to the, the consumers is Redis PubSub. Uh, do you know what Redis PubSub? Redis uh, PubSub is a feature of Redis uh, where you say, "I want to know about this channel. Uh, I want to get any information that comes into this channel." Uh, it's publish subscribe. What it stands for. Um, so Redis is the, the backing for that. It will probably be generic in release or like Rails 5.1, I would guess, because uh, there are a lot of things that do this. Um, but right now it's Redis. Sounds like it ships with the stuff you need to connect the client to the channel, JavaScript-wise? Yep. Does Rails ship with like other JavaScript things that I didn't know about? Because that looks surprise me. Turbo links. Turbo links, oh, yeah. uh, jQuery, other stuff, probably. All the 
unobtrusive JavaScript. Unobtrusive, yeah. 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 Unobtrusive yeah. JavaScript. Yeah. Like, from a true um, form inputs. I'm actually using the, un the unobtrusive stuff in the, in the message sending. It's a, it's a normal, normal Rails call to a, to a controller. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, what sort of client-side support is required? Like, are there certain browsers that you need to be using to, that you know? Uh, web sockets are not good in like old IE. Everything oh, current is like all the new stuff though shouldn't have any issues. WebSockets is a pretty old uh, standard, and I'm using the word standard loosely here because it's been an informal standard for five or six years now, and it only got formalized, I think, in 2015. Um, it's probably going to last a few years. HTTP2 looks like it's probably going to be a better solution to like almost all the problems, but Rail or Ruby and HTTP two are not friends right now. So if you need if you need this kind of feature in your app, like WebSockets are a good solution to it. Um, and if it doesn't work for you, Pusher, uh, Pub Sub Pub uh, Pub Nub. Very few uh, commercial players in the field that do kind of live pub publish subscribe things. Um, but this is this is the first good thing I've seen in in Rails for doing this sort of thing, like that's baked in. So. I assume there's also a mechanism to screen server initiated broadcasts as well. Uh, that is actually what the messages are. Uh, Can you call that from anywhere then? Yeah, so. Background job finishes, send out something across a website. That's sort of well. That's that's what I'm saying. The uh, this create call is actually coming from unobtrusive JavaScript form in in that message page, uh, and so when we get that normal call, we're doing a server push. So you can imagine that coming from anywhere inside your Rails app. Is action capable available outside of application? I think so. Yes, if you if you had if you had your full rail stack running in your background worker, I think hypothetically a vent machine would be started and you could do this thing. <laughs> uh, God be with you if you're doing that. <laughs> but I think that, that that would be a thing. Um, yeah, so that's a server initiated one. That's a great question. I don't really know the answer. I think yes, but I'm not sure. It's just a sort of thing I've done in the past. So, yeah. you say pressure. Yeah. Would it be possible to use it as a client to another, like, action cable server or something? Like, server to server? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or you have, like, an actual action cable server running out here, but you're using, like, Actually, cable as a client to connect to that while it's doing all the website stuff. I'm going to say probably. Uh, that's a thing I wanted to investigate and just ran out of time. Uh, I wanted to see if I could get two servers to to talk to each other, but I just you know four four or five hours, and I was like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so uh, hypothetically, you could do this because it's just yeah. a TCP connection. Uh, realistically, uh, just use. There are probably better tools for that thing. Um, <coughs> so this doesn't uh, go into the uh, rail stack at all, right? When you get a message back to the server, right? As far as the aware and everything. So just skip all that and go straight. Yes and no. Uh, it's all loaded. The way I did it, it's all loaded. All of Rails is loaded into memory, so you're still living with it. But yeah, it will go to this uh, channel, channel and other file that I showed at the very beginning. Um, and you can you're, you're going to skip most of your middleware. Uh, it's going to go through it maybe once. I don't think it does, but it might because you have to initiate. 
the connection. Um, but I'm not sure. I, I would guess that it doesn't. But then again, it's doing the logging, which means at some point it's doing the logging over, or it's set up completely separately. I don't know. I didn't dig in that deep. Um, good questions. We should chat about it in FlowDoc if someone finds out the answer, including me. Um, or in Bago chat. Or in Bago chat. Uh, I'll be releasing that next week. $99 a month. All the bongos. I'll have like four different kinds of bongos in that release. You can have purchases of bongos. Yeah, you can buy three others. They're different colors. You get a discount if you pay them. Uh, if you pay Emily, I'll give you two months free, and you get a special collector edition one. Any questions? All right.